Good morning, dear members of the panel and colleagues. I'd like to introduce presentation devoted to reconstructive plastic surgeries. Dysmoid fibroma is rare to uh, uh, lesion, In the, so they're quite rare. Two, four cases for one million people per year, no more than 3% from soft tissue. Uh, tumor. Dysmoid fibroma is a kind of a borderline, uh, but they, there are no metastases, but there can be relapses after surgery. They can develop uh, in any uh, localization, and uh, uh, patients who have these are uh, uh, people of socially active age. For such patients, the growth of tumor and relaxes after multiple surgeries, as well as the volume of surgeries, can become the cause for losing uh, uh, working ability, social disadaptation, and low quality of life. And it's necessary to look at the options of treating this disease that would provide good oncological results as well as functional and cosmetic results. Now, the world community has recommendations for treatment this group of patients. The tactics of treatment depends on many factors, such as surgery, distant radio, remote radiotherapy, conservative therapy, systemic medication therapy. It was believed that the most efficacious method would be surgical treatment. But now the world publications have um, evidence that it's necessary to start treatment of this patient with dynamic uh, follow-up, which is shown in the recommendations. As to publications in national literature, there are few. Uh, there have been few observations. There have been some clinical cases. In our country, the greatest experience in treating this patient is possessed by Herzen Institute. Developments on this subject uh, were started in 1960s. They studied the role of radiotherapy in treating dysmoid fibromas as independent as well as combination with chemotherapy. They developed different uh, options for medication treatment since 2013. There was a group for diagnostics and treatment of dysmoid fibromas, which involves specialists of different units, and they're developing new methods of treatment and assess their efficacy. This uh, uh, trial, uh, uh, this study shows the results of uh, dysmoid fibroma treatment, uh, uh, specifics of surgery was assessed uh, um, in case of 40 patients who ha went through surgery in 2017, the majority of patients were older than 40. Women prevailed as to localization. Those were mostly patients with tumor localization in soft tissue of shoulder, um, girdle, and upper limbs. And then there was location in soft tissue of lower limbs as well as body and neck. As to primary tumor, 55 percent. As to uh, referred, uh, as to relapse, 45 referred to us. We divided this uh, surgical group into two. The first group encompassed 22 patients. As a result of surgery, they went through plastic. 18 patients had size and localization of the tumor, which required reconstructive and plastic operation. Plastic toraco dorsal flap was used, and they used uh, uh, flexes or a pectoral flap a composite uh, uh, material with a, tr um, a translocated flap. Uh, this slide shows clinical example. A patient referred to us with regards to dysmoid fibroma. However, uh, we are talking about Gardner syndrome. She was uh, diagnosed with adenomatose of thick gut uh, that was operated. 
so she had multifocal growth of tumor in, in soft tissues of the patellar girdle. And then we performed plastic with local tissues and extirpation of uh, uh, spatula. Uh, uh, here the tumor is much uh, smaller, though its locations required reconstructive plastic surgeries. Resection of the wing of iliac bone was uh, made, and then composite grid uh, mesh uh, was uh, applied. They used anchor needles. We looked at um, uh, that uh, margins of resection in two groups, although there were just few patients and the differences were not statistically significant. In our trial, we can conclude that the nature of using Plus, uh, or non-use or use of plastic component does not influence the degree of uh, achieving negative margin of resection. The tactics of further treatment was based on data about resection margins. Patients where um, a tumor was excised within healthy uh, tissues uh, were followed up. And the second group was administered uh, during therapy, hormone therapy for patients uh, uh, or patients who referred with regards to, uh, well, other relapses, secondary relapses. Uh, so we administered chemotherapy with the results. Duration of follow-up was uh, well, 16, I mean, follow-up was 16.5. Um, then we see relapse uh, uh, free uh, survival within years shown on the table. And uh, to assess the factors influencing relapse free survival, we conducted one single factor analysis, such factors as age, gender localization, tumor size, nature of tumor process, primary or relapsing resection margins, and adjuvant treatment. Uh, so those were the criteria. Single factor analysis showed that localization of tumor is a prognostic, uh, prognostically uh, significant factor. Uh, the one localized at the body have a higher uh, rate of uh, relapse-free survival versus others. And unfavorable prognostic factor is localization of tumor in soft tissues of upper limbs. One-year relapse-free survival accounted for 66%, two-year 48%, and three-year 36 Now. Many publications discuss the influence of resection margins on relapse-free survival. Yeah. Our trial uh, showed that this factor does not influence relapse-free survival. Uh, the indicators in both groups were similar. During the trial, out of 73%, uh, only four went through surgery. 33 patients uh, uh, were not good for this method. For this group of patients, we offered medication treatment. There are several options, chemo, hormone therapy, and uh, there was a small group of patients whom we administered imatinib. During the trial, full, uh, we didn't observe complete uh, tumor resorption, although there is data in the global literature saying that with medical treatment, one could achieve complete uh, disappearance of uh, tumor. But uh, clinical efficacy proved to be quite high. Here you see the example of most frequently encountered effect with uh, systemic medication therapy. A tumor shrinks by twofold and even more. If it is within this size and there is no progression, we can assess this result as positive. Here is an interesting clinical case. A patient of 23 years uh, referred to it, localization of dysmorphic broma in a pterodactyl fossa, pterodactyl fossa. And um, 
she was uh, chemotherapy was administered so the first slide is before treatment and the last is 12 months after here you see almost complete disappearance of tumor but she referred to us uh, she had complaints about inability to open her mouth so uh, she, st uh, she she still complaining. She felt better, although, but she couldn't fully open her mouth. So unfortunately, we couldn't uh, obtain uh, well perfect result. So patients with extra abdominal dysmoid fibroma are indicated surgery only in 50 uh, percent. Plastic uh, surgeries uh, didn't influence relapse uh, free survival. Um, chemotherapy and hormone therapy allowed to reach local control over tumor growth and can be used as independent variant of treatment or as adjuvant therapy in patients with positive resection margins. Thank you very much. I'd like to ask a question. Administering common therapy, did you define receptor status of the tumor? Before that, there had been a work devoted to receptor status and improvements on the background of hormone therapy. However, no significant improvements with regard to receptor status of the tumor were not registered. Then what are the criteria of inclusion, uh, of including for hormone therapy? We administer hormone therapy after surgery. If there was a positive uh, resection uh, margin R1 or R2, or if surgery was not performed, we can administer hormone therapy for patients who had big size tumors, we performed chemotherapy and to control uh, for another half a year. Uh, so we mm, uh, still uh, preserved hormone therapy. We left it. Thank you for your presentation. Fibromatose of dysmoid type is a real problem for surgeons. I would like to know the attitude of your clinic to primary tumors, not to the 25th uh, half resectable relapse. What's your attitude when you see small resectable uh, uh, tumor of soft tissues, epidural, for example, do you do anything or maybe you uh, follow up or you are uh, proponents of more aggressive uh, approach? You know that in Europe there is an approach. Uh, is don't touch and everything will be good. Maybe the tactics will be the same for primary uh, neoplasms. And uh, thank you very much. It's our attitude. when patient goes with primary tumor, it's individual. If it is primary tumor, which is resectable, we will start with surgery. But sometimes they will come with tumors localized in soft tissues of the neck, and their resectability is questioned. But this localization is uh, unfavorable for us. It's likely to grow. We don't give us the right to leave it without treatment. Sometimes we discuss that at first stage there will be chemotherapy, then surgeons will consider opportunity to excise, or there is chemotherapy and we achieve stabilization. And the second question, that's regimen of therapy. The, in this patient, we use chemotherapy and vinrilbin and metatrexate. Uh, but there is a reservation. We believe that if a tumor is localized in critical zones where the growth one millimeter can result in uh, negative impacts, we resort to more aggressive method, Doc doxyrubicin, for example, but that was a young patient who had just uh, had her baby born. She was still breast uh, feeding. And we decided that this patient, uh, we shall start with finlilbin, and we received good results. But, however, 
there are questions we will still fo uh, follow her up uh, every six months she will be visiting us thank you so we use the term dysmoid fibroma so uh, understand it's fibromatosis why don't you use international classification and the second thing have you ever tried Uh, to calculate uh, um, long-term results. R1 and R0 uh, could be united, and then you could have received differences in survival. Have you tried to combine R1 with R0? No, we didn't. Uh, when uh, making design, we based on literary data, global literary data, where they usually compare the group of negative uh, resection margins and positive and uh, the influence on relapse-free survival uh, as to the terms in our works and articles we'll write dysmoid fibroma in brackets aggressive fibromatosis so what is the name then dysmoid fibroma What's the international name? Aggressive fibromatosis. Dr. Renatov was telling about that in his presentation. Thank you for your presentation. My question concerns statistics. The differences related to relapse-free survival at localization in the body and limbs. Is it associated with uh, an achievement of negative margin or is it related to biology of tumor? Yes, we also ask this question to ourselves. We don't have a straightforward answer. It uh, deserves, it requires further uh, studies. It's not always that at surgery we manage to achieve negative resection margins. And um, we will recruit more patients and uh, follow up uh, this issue. Maybe it would be logic to make a graph. Uh, the rate of achieving uh, negative margin at abdominal localization, or at upper limb uh, localization, then correlation of relapse-free survival could be made. Thank you. I also have some. You've been talking about a clinical case, so uh, part of a shoulder blade and uh, uh, part of a ileum. Uh, ileum. So what was the operation? I'm sorry, uh, it wasn't clear. When localization was an ileum, we uh, resected the uh, uh, the iliac bone spatula and we used a composite net with the resectional part of the uh, uh, bone. Are you familiar with the recommendation of uh, ASCA and ESMA, of course? Um, so how is it correlated with the date of clinical recommendations in Russia. So this of the Ministry of Health, so this is also a legal document. Um, do you have time to uh, familiarize yourself with it? No, uh, I didn't have time. <laughs> 